Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we have a very exciting update to the Hoka Mach Supersonic. It's the Mach 5. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Hoka Mach 5 is an up-tempo neutral daily trainer that comes on the heels of the Mach Supersonic. We actually have it here in the studio so we can kind of compare and contrast what changed. Now, this the Supersonic at least is like the Mach 4.5, went in Mach 4, Supersonic, and now the Mach 5. They took the lessons learned from the Supersonic that had that new Profi Plus supercritical foam and the lessons learned with the Mach 4 and basically took all of those and incorporated them here into the Mach 5. So the changes look minor, but I think the performance is a completely different experience and I'm excited to talk. The Mach Five comes in at $140, and we do lose a little bit of weight coming from the Supersonic. The Mach 5 comes in at 8.2 ounces. The Supersonic was 8.3, so a slight decrease. I believe the Mach 2 was 8.2 as well, um, so no change there. So the shoe does stay relatively light. The stack height remains the same, even though we do get a little bit more volume in the midsole, so it's gonna be 29 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot for that same classic Hoka five millimeter drop. According to Hoka, the spring measurement and geometry of the midsole remains unchanged from the four, the supersonic, and now to the five. It should be all the same, at least according to Hoka. However, the midsole volume now in the five is gonna be slightly more compared to the previous two versions. So when I compared the supersonic and the Mach 5, at least with regard to like the platform, I did my best to try to line them up. You do get a little bit of a wider base now with the Mach 5, at least in that rubberized EVA foam section. And if you're not familiar, the Mach is a dual density foam setup where essentially you get a softer foam on top and then the bottom is a rubberized EVA foam. There's no rubber on the outsole so it has to be a little bit more firm and more durable. The top layer of foam is still Profi Plus. However, this is very deceiving because it feels nothing like the Profi Plus foam we saw on the Supersonic. The Supersonic was a little bit more firm, not as soft, didn't have a whole lot of energy return. And I think the experience we get with the Mach 5 was what people were expecting with the Mach Supersonic. The Profi Plus foam definitely makes the Mach 5 feel much softer and bouncier compared to the previous two versions. And part of the reason is the geometry and the tooling of the Profi Plus foam it seems to be thicker in the back of the shoe, just get a little bit more underfoot and just a little bit more in the forefoot section as well. At least kind of when you do the eyeball test, it just looks like added just a little bit more of it. And even when you kind of do the thumb test as well, it feels much softer compared to the previous, I guess, Profi Plus version we saw on the Supersonic. So overall, it's much bouncier, much softer, and provides a really nice experience. It's kind of like just a softer, bouncier Mach, and I really enjoyed it. I think that's what we were hoping for from the Supersonic, and now we finally get it here with the Mach 5. So I think it's an update in the right direction. It just feels more lively underfoot, more energy return, and I think a lot of people are going to be happy with this upgrade. Now, if you want a firmer experience or something uh, like that, I would probably go, you know, stick with either the Mach 4 or the Supersonic, depending on you like. I don't think this is too much cushion. It feels quite nice. It feels very much like a mock, just with a little bit extra bounce and softness underfoot, which I think was very much appreciated. So overall, the big takeaway is the implementation of the Profi Plus foam on the Mach 5 is much more energy filled and much more lively than what we saw on the previous two versions. Again, we do get a little bit more volume in the midsole. I'm not sure if they changed the formulation. It is confusing because they're both called Profi, but the experience here just feels like a mock with just a lot more energy turn and bounce underneath. The outsole remains roughly unchanged. It's still a rubberless outsole and it's slightly wider than the previous two versions, but still rubberized EVA foam. People either love it or they hate it. Seems to keep the shoe light. Um, so no major big updates here. The upper has been updated to be a single thin piece of Creole Jacquard engineered mesh. Essentially, it's really thin, light, and breathable. Very comfortable, didn't have any issues with it. I found it quite pleasant and fit true to size for me as well. The tongue on the shoe also received a big update, especially if you're coming from the Mach Supersonic. It's incredibly thin and has strategic foam blocks, kind of placed throughout to keep the lace pressure off the top of your foot. But other than that, it's incredibly minimal, very thin. It works well. Uh, it does have two pieces of engineered mesh on each side for like a partially gusseted effect. And the other thing I'll say is it does come up rather high on your foot, especially if you're coming from the previous two versions. So it's a little bit longer, I'll say. Um, and the other thing is it doesn't interact with the laces. So there's no tie-in point. So it just kind of drops down when your foot's not in the shoe. I don't know if that's a big issue because the tongue is gusseted, uh, but it is something to note. 
The lacing system is fairly standard. You get quite a bit of lace coverage. I will say that the laces are extremely long. This is some of the longest laces I've seen. I think the Supersonic, some people were saying they're too short, so they may have overcompensated here with the Mach 5. So uh, yeah, just be aware, the laces are super long. Moving to the back of the shoe, Hoka said they did update the heel counter for a more optimized fit. Personally, I was really happy with the lockdown and fit of the Supersonic, and that really didn't change here. I thought the lockdown and fit worked well. The lacing system, the upper, it kept me really well connected to the shoe. It's not as plush or as comfortable the supersonic just because the, the supersonic tongue was a little bit thicker and the Mach 4 tongue is a little bit thicker as well compared to the Mach 5. So I'd say the comfortability goes down a little bit. It's not an uncomfortable shoe, but it just doesn't have as much padding compared to the previous two versions. Uh, the heel counter itself is, is rather rigid for being such a light shoe. Typically, we get shoes that are a little bit lighter. Uh, they don't have heel counters that are that well built. And you do get a, a slightly larger Elfair pull tab. So those are all the basic facts. Let's talk about what worked and what didn't work. The first big positive for me was the upgrades they made to that ProFly Plus foam. It makes the shoe much bouncier. It's much softer than the Mach 4 and the Mach Supersonic. Has a nice little level of pop to it. Still feels like a Mach shoe. You can pick up the pace well. It just feels like you have a little bit more underfoot. Now, it's not a mushy experience. I didn't feel like I was getting lost in the midsole. You can still feel that rubberized EVA foam underneath. It slaps the ground. It's a louder shoe. But overall, I think it's a move in the right direction. I'm happy they made it softer and bouncier. The first positive for me was the Mach 5 was very versatile. I think that's a big reason why people like the Mach 4. You could take it for whatever run you wanted. And yes, it's a tempo daily trainer, but people like the Mach 4 for a wide variety of situations. I think the Mach 5 does the same thing, just in a softer, bouncier package. And the last positive for me was the lockdown and fit of the upper. Felt very connected to the shoe, no heel slipping. It worked really well. I didn't have any issues with the Supersonic. I'm happy they didn't ruin a good thing here on the Mach 5. However, the shoe wasn't perfect and there are a couple things I'd probably tweak. The first thing I would probably change is make the tongue a little bit thicker, just add a little bit more cushioning to it. I think they probably could have added a couple more foam blocks. It was fine, it did the job. It just wasn't as comfortable as the Supersonic. Now I realize, you know, it comes with weight and sometimes it holds sweat because it has a little bit more cushion, but I think they could probably find something that just is a little a bit more well padded. Again, no major issues. I just wish they could you know, make it a little bit more comfortable. The next thing I would say is probably shorten the laces. They're extremely long. It's just kind of annoying to have them flop around. Yes, you can change the laces, tie them in a different way. I, I get all that. Just, just one of those small things where it, just, it should be easy to get the laces exactly right. And I do wish the laces interacted with the tongue just because the tongue falls down. It's one of those minor, minor inconveniences trying to get your foot in and out of the shoe. I do like it when the tongue interacts or ties in directly with the lace system itself. So overall, my first impressions of the Mach 5 are pretty good. It's very soft. It's a bouncier, experience compared to the previous two and I think it's a move in the right direction. I'm actually happy to see Hoka kind of get into these new foams and it makes me even more excited to see how they implement this version of ProFly Plus. Again, it's a different experience, different sensation than we saw on the Mach Supersonic. I think that's going to confuse a lot of people because a lot of the reviews on the Supersonic in my experience too was that it was very firm. Uh, it just didn't have a whole lot of energy return to it. It wasn't as versatile just because it is a more firm ride. So I think with this version or the version that's on the, um, the Mach 5, I think that's going to be very very exciting to see what other implementations or what other lines they can take this Profi Plus foam into. Well, that concludes my review. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Mach 5 and what other shoes should Hoka use this new Profi Plus foam in. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.